we are already past nine releases of Home Assistant this year. That means that we still have three to go in 2024. And today we're going to look at what's new in 2024.10 or October release of Home Assistant. We'll start in a couple of seconds. This year is famous for the UI changes, UI improvements, and this release, of course, is once again packed with it. At first, it may not look much, but it actually is really a lot. So we have new two things that you can do with your sections. You can add titles and also subtitles. I know that this is not a movie, but now we can have titles and subtitles. Actually, if you have used something like heading previously, it should have been automatically converted to the title as soon as you upgrade your system. But with that we also have subtitles, so what are the titles and subtitles? If we look at this section here, you can notice a title that has name, icon, and you can now also pick up the icon from the list, you do not have to use emojis for that. And also we have here two entity state. One is the lock, currently unlocked, and the other one is the temperature. But besides title, you can also have subtitle because you can have sections inside sections. For example, this one here. It is environment, we have the temperature here, and next one is called control. What is the difference? The difference is in the size and spacing. For example, this one here is a full unit, one unit, and this subtitle is half unit, so this one is much smaller in size. But all you can do with the title, you can also do with subtitle. If we click on edit icon, if we edit this one, you can see that we have icons here. You don't need to use those icons anymore. You can remove them and, for example, select one from the list. As I said, you can also add entities. Here I have kitchen door information. It is unlocked. And also kitchen information. This one is an entity for the temperature. If I want to add humidity, kitchen humidity. And now we have kitchen humidity. But we can also further customize it. For example, this one has changed color. We do that by clicking the edit button and then change the appearance. Appearance can be no color, you can specify the color or you can use state color. For example, for the lock it will be green if it's locked and red if it's unlocked. And that means that depending on the state and also type of the entity, it may change the color. So of course you don't have to customize it by hand. But there is also additional things that you can do for it. For example, use visibility and add condition if the temperature is above certain threshold or if the door is unlocked then show the icon in other case hide it if you want to add new title or subtitle just click on plus sign select heading and in the heading style section select if you want to use title or subtitle specify the name for the heading icon interactions because yes you can also use this to control or to further drill down into the menus for example navigate and then use this to navigate to specific Lovelace cards, for example Synology. Click save and now this title also has an icon next to it or symbol that shows us that we can navigate further. For example, if we click on it, it will take us to another view. The next new thing in this release is something that can be a lifesaver or time saver. Let me ask you a question. How many times did you go to developer tools, statistics and then fix the issues? Well. I guess that probably some of you have never even went there to check what you can do in statistics and also to see if you can fix the issues. If you now have issues with long-term statistics, those issues will be pushed as repairs. So in future, if you go to settings, repairs, you will see here in the list if any long-term statistics needs repair. While Home Assistant has been focusing on the UI, the YAML and the YAML syntax has also been updated. But don't worry, all the changes to the YAML syntax are always backwards compatible. That means that you can, but also do not need to change any YAML code you have in your automations or scripts, for example. They will still work with the old code. But the new code brings some updates and a better logic. For example, if we go to automations, click on this here, three dots, edit in YAML. We now see that the wording has changed. For example, previously this was trigger. This was action which is okay, but what if you have multiple triggers, multiple conditions, multiple actions, then you will still have action, column, and the list couple of actions. In this case, the naming has changed, it's now much better than it was previously. Also, the biggest issue for me at least was conditions. 
because although we had multiple conditions or stacked conditions, it started condition, then condition, and then the conditions that you actually want to use. Now it's conditions, condition one, condition two, condition three. I know that some of you are still skeptical about matter, but matter is actually getting better and better. Yes, there are a lot of issues with matter. For example, if you are using some devices such as light bulbs, you may be able to turn them on and off, but you cannot change the effects, change the color, etc., etc. But these things are softer things and they will be improved. So if you are already jumping into the bandwagon of the matter support, there are some additions and updates in this release too. For example, now we have button entities, which allows us to create buttons. So the difference between switch and button is you push button and you turn on or off the switch. We also have valve entities for support for the water valves, for example. Then we have supports for operation state, for example, is it turned on, on what state, etc., etc. Support for smoke and CO2 sensors, and also support for 1.3 meter power or energy sensors. As always, this release brings us a lot of new integrations, but not just new integrations, also updates to the existing integrations. For example, Cambridge Audio, Deco Smart Lighting, Duke Energy, Google Photos, Iskra, Electrico Charging Station, Monarch Money, NYT Games, Sensotera, Trigger Command, WeHeat, WMS, Web Control Pro, but also improvements to the Tesla fleet, a real link hub, which now allows you to control volume, ringtone, and also status. And we also have updates to ring and SwitchBot cloud integration, so not local Bluetooth integration, but cloud integration, has also brought that support for K10 Plus mini robot vacuum. In terms of other updates to the integrations, Amon CMS, Google Cloud Platform, HTML5 push notifications, and Mold Indicator are now available through UI. For configuration, I will not be going into the all noteworthy changes. I will just be linking you to the documentation where you can read all about what's new in this release. And there is a lot of things that have been improved or added. Plus, there are some other improvements that you can find beneficial. For example, the source of repair, where the system will now point you to the automation that has repair needed, and you can easily open it and edit it. There have been updates to the YAML editor. Now you can easily see how everything is aligned, but that is actually not all. You can now also collapse or expand sections based on indentation level. So it's a plus if you're using still YAML editors. I have been running this and this has been recording on the beta 4 since the beta 0 was released. Each beta release is released to fix some of the things, improve of the other things and also add or subtract functionality. As I said, this was recorded on the beta 4 and so far I haven't had any issues with my setup. But still, before you update your system, make sure that you look at the backward incompatible changes. There is a lot of them, not everything is very crucial, but it may be for you or your setup. For example, climate, humidifier, Nuki, open therm gateway, pink, Z-Wave, and last ZHA or Zigbee Home Automation. I really am loving all of the changes and updates to the sections inside Home Assistant. And I will be slowly migrating my UI on my main production environment from the current system to the sections because it allows me to further customize it and get most out of it. But it still needs some of the work. That's not my words, that's actually words of the developers. And I'm really looking forward to see what will the future releases of Home Assistant bring us. On the side note, I did release last week video about the SwitchBot humidifier and SwitchBot Meter Pro. Unfortunately, with the release of 2024.10 of Home Assistant, those devices are still not natively supported inside Home Assistant. As I mentioned, you can use both of those devices and add them to Home Assistant via the Matter support. But unlike the Meter Pro that can give you values for the humidity and also temperature, in terms of humidifier, you will only be able to turn it on or off. So hopefully those devices will receive native support inside Home Assistant in the 2024.11, which is only a month away. I really do hope that you did find this video interesting. And if you did find this interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It means really a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you have any kind of comment, question in regard to the latest release, previous releases or some wishes due to really wish Home Assistant would add in the future, drop me a line down in a comment section below. And before I end up the video, I would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, shared and commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. 
and becoming a YouTube channel member for only two euros or two dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.